Hello, this is David John Syracuse. I am a hospice and palliative physician and serve as the medical director for palliative care at Maine Health. It's my pleasure to talk with you today, um, sharing some slides that my colleague Eileen McDonald and I have prepared about advanced care planning and a program that we are doing at Maine Health which involves using the Respecting Choices program that has been developed at Gunderson Health uh, Systems in La Crosse, Wisconsin. The following quote I find is very appropriate in terms of thinking about advanced care planning. The quote by, the quote by Kathleen Dean Moore reads, quote, Life is not something we go through or that happens to us. It is something we create by our decisions. So I'd like to review the objectives of our talk today. It's to understand what advanced care planning is and why it is so important to understand the need for and the nature of quality conversations for successful advanced care planning, to know what advanced directives are and appreciate their limitations, to understand the process of advanced care planning with an advanced care planning facilitator who is trained in the Respecting Choices method to become familiar with the process of thinking and talking about your wishes for care and developing and sharing a written plan, your advanced directive. Now advanced care planning can be defined as quote, an organized process of communication to help individuals understand reflect upon and discuss goals for future health care decisions in the context of their values and beliefs. When the process is done well, it has the power to produce a written plan, an advanced directive, that accurately ref represents the individual's preferences and thoroughly prepares others to make health care decisions consistent with these preferences. So the process of advanced care planning involves conversations in which patients discuss and understand future health care choices. It's a time for patients to reflect on values and goals that are most important to them and an opportunity for patients to discuss their choices with family members and help prepare family members to participate in future choices. In contrast, an advanced directive is a written plan made by a capable person or their surrogate, that is the person who has been chosen to speak for the individual for future medical care regarding treatments or goals of care for a possible probable event. Ira Bayok, an author who's written a number of wonderful books about palliative and hospice care, who himself is a well-known and respected hospice and palliative physician, has shared with us in one of his slides from one of his presentations that advanced directives are not prescriptions, they're not do not resuscitate orders, and are not comfort measure only orders. But advanced directives may serve as an advocacy tool to help patients project their caring for family into an uncertain future. To help people to assert their wishes for care they will receive in the future. 
It also may be used as a counseling tool for supporting and guiding family members in making decisions in stress situations. The goal of advanced care planning is a very important one. It is to allow us to retain the control over the treatment we receive, whether or not we are able to speak for ourselves at the time critical decisions must be made. This means that we need to be engaged in advanced care planning before we lose the ability to think for ourselves and to express ourselves. And since an illness or an accident could occur at any time which would render us unable to speak for ourselves, it's critically important that all adults engage in the process of advanced care planning and create an advanced directive. In engaging in the process of advanced care planning, ideally we would all be well informed about our condition and our options for care. We would appreciate and understand the benefits and the burdens of options for our care. We would have an opportunity to clearly express our wishes and preferences for care based on our goals, values, beliefs, and sense of quality of life, and have those wishes known and acted upon by healthcare professionals wherever we as a patient be. The elements of advanced care planning, as put forth in the respecting choices method, involves a number of items. First is to choose a health care decision maker also called a health care agent or health care proxy or durable power of attorney for health care who understands the role and responsibilities. The second is to think about, decide, and share what kind of care you would want if you had severe brain injury or a chronic illness which was not going to get better. A third element is to think about and share any religious, cultural, or personal beliefs that may affect your decisions for medical care. A fourth is to share wishes and decisions for health care with your agent, other family members, physician, and health care organizations. Another important element is to record your wishes and decisions for health care as written documents called advanced directives. Sharing copies of your advanced directive with your agent, with other family members, your physician, the hospital where you receive care, and keep a copy in your home and with you are also very important. I also recommend that you keep a copy of your advanced directive in your glove compartment and when you travel that you bring one with you in the event that anything should happen to you while you travel. Another element is to review and change your advanced directive whenever your condition and or your wishes change and communicate those changes and give a copy of your updated advanced directive to your agent, to other family members, your physician and healthcare organizations. We also need to be asking ourselves, what conversations with others should I have? So now I'd like to discuss why we at Maine Health have chosen the Respecting Choices method and one major reason is that the Respecting Choices program focuses on the process of advanced care planning, not simply on completing a living will or an advanced directive. What the Respecting Choices program 
puts forward is five promises. First, we will initiate conversations. Second, we will provide assistance with advanced care planning. Third, we will make sure plans are clear. Fourth, we will maintain and retrieve plans. And fifth, we will appropriately follow plans. At Maine Health, we are making the commitment to these same five promises to the patients served by our health care system. Respecting Choices has evolved into three levels or steps of advanced care planning. The first is for healthy adults, really of any age. We are focusing on individuals 55 and older or younger individuals with serious illness, but again, first steps is really appropriate for all adults. The key elements in the first steps is to create a power of attorney for health care, meaning identify a person who can fulfill the responsibilities of serving as your health care agent. And we will review these roles and responsibilities in just a moment. The second element of critical importance is to consider what our goals of care would be if we were to experience severe neurologic or brain injury. The next level or so-called next steps is for adults with progressive life-limiting illness who are suffering complications or consequences of that, those illnesses. In addition to creating a power of attorney for health care and considering goals of care for severe neurologic injury, next steps includes a discussion of goals of treatment of complications result in a bad outcome. Or if things don't occur as well as we're hoping they will. The third level is called last steps and it's for adults for whom it would not be a surprise if they were to die within the next 12 months. So this group of people includes individuals with advanced stages of illness, life limiting illness, as well as people of advanced age and frailty. In addition to addressing the other issues, the last steps involves having detailed conversations and developing a specific plan of care which is expressed in medical orders, most often using the POLST program and POLST stands for Physician Orders for Life-Sustaining Therapy. In starting with the first step of advanced care planning, the three questions that the facilitator would put forward in the conversation would be who would you want to make decisions for you if you couldn't make them for yourself? What would be the goals of treatment if you permanently lost the ability to meaningfully know who you were, who you were with, and where you were? And do you have any religious, personal, or cultural views that would affect treatment choices? Very often, advanced care planning takes longer than we would think it would. And very often, it involves multiple meetings and conversations. Sometimes, it is ideal for the adult to return for another conversation with their agent this provides an opportunity to assess understanding, to review and discuss the 
three steps of advanced care planning decisions about which we just spoke. It's an opportunity to promote understanding of the role of the healthcare agent, to complete a written plan, and to design strategies to talk about how to communicate plan. Now the choice of the decision maker or agent is a very important one. Sometimes people choose the person who they're closest to emotionally. But it's helpful really to think about the roles and responsibilities of the agent in making a decision as to who is best to serve in, in this role. The first is, is the person willing to perform the responsibilities of the role? And the responsibilities are really to represent the wishes of the person who is engaging in the advanced care planning. The second responsibility of the person is to know your wishes for future medical decisions. It's also essential that the person be able to make the health care decisions you want even if that person disagrees with your decisions. And is the person, your agent, able to make medical decisions under stressful situations? This is the situation in which most, if not all, people want to avoid, and fear may happen, and unfortunately sometimes does happen if people don't think about and discuss what kind of care they would like at the end of their life. What we are working towards is to engage people in conversations when they're still able to think about the kind of care they want and to discuss that kind of care and then to create a written plan, an advanced directive that states their health care agent and their wish. When advanced illness occurs and progresses, the conversations with the advanced care planning facilitator allow and encourage discussions about life sustaining or life prolonging treatments. Such choices as when to start such treatments or when to forego or withhold them and how and when to maintain comfort and also when may the person wish when may you wish to transition from care focused on your illness to care focused exclusively on your comfort. The life-sustaining treatment conversations include an understanding of the potential, the benefits, the burdens, and the outcomes of life-sustaining treatment. Such treatments as CPR which is an abbreviation for cardiopulmonary resuscitation, intubation and mechanical ventilation, which is placement of a breathing tube down one's throat and attaching to a mechanical breathing machine. When artificial nutrition by vein or by tube would be given, for patients with kidney disease, when or if dialysis should be offered. And often near the end of life, when or for what goals should antibiotics be given or intravenous hydration, fluids by vein. In discussing these life prolonging forms of treatment, it's important to explore understanding of the treatment decision to uncover gaps in information, to
to reveal areas of misinformation or confusion so that an opportunity will then present itself to clarify. It's an opportunity to explore understanding of benefits and burdens and provide information as appropriate and to explore goals for treatment. What would a person, what would you expect to happen? Our main health care advance directive, which we frequently use, involves a number of components, an opportunity to identify and record the person you would like to serve as your health care agent. You may also wish to choose a first and second alternate. The form allows that. Um, a second part allows you to detail uh, your feelings about specific or certain treatments. A third component to identify your primary care physician and other physicians. And then a fourth section allows you to, to state your decision about donating organs and body parts or tissues after death. And a fifth to state any wishes you have about a funeral or burial. The sixth, the critically important component, is the actual portion of the document in which the person completing it signs it and it is witnessed by two individuals. There's also an opportunity for the form to be notarized, which does not need to occur at the time that the person signs and the document is witnessed. There is also a part seven, which is a do not resuscitate DNR form, which is separate from the rest of the document in which a person who does not wish to undergo resuscitation can sign the form and discuss it with his or her physician and have the physician sign it. Again, the do not resuscitate portion of the form is separate. So I'm very glad that we've had an opportunity to have this discussion about advanced care planning and preparation of advanced care directives and distribution of advanced directives. I would like to share with you some resources that may be helpful to you, particularly when considering care in our future. The getpalliativecare.org and getpalliativecare.com are two very helpful resources about palliative care. In terms of information about having conversations, uh, the booklet uh, entitled Hard Choices for Loving People by Hank Dunn is an outstanding resource for patients and their families as well and also for caregivers in general. It is written in simple healthcare language in a very practical and reflective way by a nursing home and hospice chaplain. It is not based on any particular faith or any particular set of values and it's available online at www.hardchoices.com. It addresses resuscitation and artificial nutrition and hydration, as well as the issue about decisions about transfer to hospital for somebody in advanced state of illness at home or in a nursing home. It discusses the issue about transitioning from treatment of the disease to a comfort-focused approach and, and to hospice care, as well as a very balanced discussion about a number of life-prolonging or life-sustaining treatments or interventions. As well, a number of resources are available 
that discuss further the whole area of advanced care planning. I'd like to share with you just some of these. Five Wishes is a document many find helpful. It, like the starter kit from the Conversation Project, poses a variety of questions that are very helpful in reflecting upon one's own values and goals and uh, wishes for care. The Conversation Project is a wonderful online resource that involves a number of patient stories. Um, I also recommend the Caring Conversations that has been prepared by the Practical Bioethics Center. Uh, Finding Your Way is a very useful document that has been prepared by the Coalition for Compassionate Care organization, and we've talked about hard choices for loving people. So I hope this information has been helpful to you. I have included on the first slide of the presentation my email address if you would like to contact me for further information or if I could be of help. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the very best.